Hi, this is Dr. Benfinio, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use a new web-based streaming app called Melon, which you can see around me here, from a company called Streamlabs. Two quick disclaimers before we get started. One, like many of you, I am working from home during the pandemic, so at some point during this video, we might get interrupted by a screaming baby or the cat. Two, this is the first time that I've done an affiliate video. There is a link to sign up for Melon in the description below this video, and I do get a small commission if you create an account. However, as with all of my other tutorials, which are mostly for Zoom, I do promise that this will be an objective review. Now, let's back up a bit for context. A couple videos ago, I looked at the pros and cons of streaming on YouTube instead of using Zoom for teaching online. The major difference there is that streaming is only one-way audio and video communication. The only way for your audience to communicate back to you is with text chat. However, YouTube doesn't have all of the limits that come with Zoom accounts in terms of the number of viewers, time limit on your videos, or the number of videos you can store. Whereas even with a paid Zoom account, you will eventually run into limits on those if you need to stream to a lot of people or have a lot of videos. And while it is relatively easy to stream directly from a webcam using YouTube's built-in interface, and again, I show how to do this in a previous video, it's much more complicated if you want to stream content from your screen. This requires third-party streaming software that you need to link to your YouTube account with a streaming key. OBS Studio, which you can see here, and again, I cover in a previous video, is a popular free program that lots of people use for streaming to platforms like Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. However, it has a lot of settings that can be kind of intimidating and overwhelming to new users. This is more geared towards professional or experienced streamers. That is where Melon comes in. It has a much simpler interface that lets you get started with streaming in just a few clicks without having to worry about all of those complicated settings. And frankly, for people coming from Zoom, this interface should look kind of familiar like this toolbar at the bottom. So what I'll do in the remainder of this video is show you how to get started creating a Melon account and then starting your first stream on YouTube. So to get started, go to melonapp.com and then click Try Melon Free. I've already created an account, so I'm going to click Login in the upper right here. You have the option of logging in with an account that you already have from an external site or creating an account for Melon with your email. And once you're logged in, again, honestly, this interface should look pretty similar to Zoom if that's what you're familiar with. It does a decent job automatically detecting your camera and microphone. It doesn't show the camera by default. That's kind of the equivalent to starting with your video muted in Zoom, but you can click the show on stream button up here in the upper left, and that will show your camera in the stream. There are a bunch of options at the bottom here. And again, this toolbar looks very similar to Zoom's if that's what you're familiar with. You can click the up arrow next to mute or stop video to select a different audio or video source. For example, if you're using a laptop with a built-in webcam and you also have an external webcam, you can select which one you want to use. There is a share screen button where again, similar to Zoom, you can share the contents of your entire screen. You can share an individual program or a new one that I don't think Zoom has, you can share an individual browser tab. There is a chat window that you can open by clicking the show chat button that'll pop up over here on the right. And there are a handful of other settings you can use, some of which are locked if you don't have the pro plan. So for example, I can click edit screen here and it will let me change my name, but you can't turn on full HD video or change this little branded logo in the corner. That's going to show up if you have the free plan, but if you sign up for the pro plan, you can change that to your own logo. It does let you get rid of this little live with melon banner in the bottom left here. I think that's kind of big and distracting. So if you can either turn that off completely or expand this banner option and it will let you change that text, you can do that for free with the basic plan. Okay, as predicted, the baby got upset, so he'll be joining us for the rest of this video. Anyway, um, there is also a virtual background option similar to what Zoom has, but that is locked and you have to sign up for the pro plan for that as well. But again, that's a bunch of different settings, but the point is you can really ignore all of those if you don't care about them. If you want to just turn your camera on and go live, all you needed to do was click that show video button and then go down here to go live and select the platform you want to go live on. So with the free account, you can stream to one platform at a time. I'm going to demonstrate that with YouTube. With the pro account, you can stream to multiple platforms at once. So that's something that a lot of times people with followers on multiple social media sites will actually use a program like this to stream to multiple sites all at the same time to reach a bigger audience. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to ask you to link the account to the site you want to log in. You'll give it your YouTube login information and it will ask for permission to manage your YouTube account. So if you are paranoid about giving apps or other sites permission to access your accounts on other sites, that is something you would probably want to watch out for and read all the small print. 
I've already done that for YouTube here, so it's already linked. I'm going to change this to a unlisted stream for now because I don't actually want to stream this recording live on my YouTube channel. I'm going to select YouTube, hit next. You give the screen a title, sorry, you give the stream a title and description, which I'm just going to type in some gibberish because I'm holding a baby with one hand here. And then click go live. It will take a second to load and then give you a countdown to when your stream will go live on YouTube. So this is important. You notice that I don't have YouTube open in my browser right now. I'm doing all of this from within Melon, but had I made this a public stream, it would be accessible to people who are currently watching my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, the baby's with mommy now. Let's try that again. As I was saying, I am doing all of this from within Melon. I have set this to an unlisted stream. But if I go to my YouTube channel, if I had set it to a public stream, it would be visible here on my channel. You can click the share stream button here, copy the stream link. So if you do have an unlisted stream, for example, for a private class that you don't want to make publicly accessible, you could then send that link to people for people to view the unlisted link and it still would not appear on your channel. You can also view it if you go into manage your YouTube stream. So hit this create, create button, click go live. And if I go down to the Manage tab here, I will see the stream as I named it in Melon, currently listed here. Once I finish that stream, the archived recording will then appear as an unlisted video on my YouTube channel. But again, technically you don't have to open YouTube at all to do any of that, which is nice. You can do all of the control from within Melon. You might wanna do a sanity check. Again, just make sure you're live, confirm that your viewers see what you think you're seeing and you know go over to your own YouTube channel and either make sure it appears here if it's unlisted or go to your main page and make sure you can see it there if it's live, just as a sanity check. But after you've done that a couple times and you're sure it's working, then I think you'd be okay just to do everything from within Melon. So I promised this would be an objective review. So after trying this out, I think the two major pros I've identified are one, that it's very, very easy to use. This interface is much less intimidating than OBS Studio, which just has these pages of very, very dense menus with lots and lots of options, which again, might be great if you're a more advanced streamer with multiple cameras, multiple microphones, and you care about bit rates and encoders and things. But if all of that is just gibberish to you and you don't wanna worry about it, then this interface is much simpler. Two, closely related, this interface is very similar to Zoom. I'm assuming it's not a coincidence that they kind of designed this control bar down here at the bottom to be very similar to Zoom, so people moving over from Zoom will be comfortable using it. I think that's a big plus if you're coming from Zoom to streaming. I'd say one of the downsides is that there are not as many options available with the free version. So you don't get virtual backgrounds with the free account, and especially for branding, if you do have your own business and you'd rather have your own logo here and not the Melon logo, then you would need to update to the upgrade to the free account. So you can learn more about the differences between the free account and the pro account by going up here to the upper right. For example, I didn't really cover this feature, but you could also invite a guest to allow another person to stream with you. The pro account lets you have more guests and again, allows more of this brand customization, watermark, full HD video and all of that stuff. So as always, I hope you found that helpful. I have mainly done Zoom tutorials in the past, but I'm trying to branch out to other software that people might want to use for pre-recording lectures or live streaming classes online. So if you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, you can leave a comment below this video. And again, there is a link to try out Melon in the description below the video and possibly somewhere here on the end screen. Thank you.